Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to the first lecture in Pharmaceutical Chemistry 2. The Pharmaceutical Chemistry 2 course deals with several topics which includes uh, the drugs acting on the autonomic nervous system and drugs acting on the central nervous system as well as other topics. So the initial part of the course will deal with the drugs acting on autonomic nervous system and especially the cholinergics and anticholinergics. So in this section of the course we are going to deal with several objectives regarding this topic, the drugs acting on cholinergics and anticholinergics. So the initial part of this section will include the classification of autonomic, of autonomic nervous system. So we're going to classify the uh, autonomic nervous systems into the parasympathetic and sympathetic and the effect of both on the affected organs. Also, we're going to identify and locate types and subtypes of cholinergic, of cholinergic receptors which are involved in the parasympathetic system. Also, going to explain the differences between muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Both of these receptors are, are the and in the main receptors present in this system, the parasympathetic nervous system. And these receptors have different structural and different functional and distribution within the body. So we will explain these differences. The remaining part of the of this uh, chapter will include the uh, dealing with pharmaceutical chemistry uh, topics. For example, interpretation of signal transduction at cholinergic neurons and methods of signal transduction, and how we can intervene or interrupt these signals using chemical compounds like drugs. Also, we are going to deal with the uh, studying or interpretation or interpreta interpreting the relationship between the structural property of the molecule of the drug and the activity against muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. So you will see how the changes in the structures will affect, will have some changes on the activity. And this is, this is usually uh, referred as a structural activity relationship. We will also uh, interpret the effect of molecular structural changes on the physical chemical properties of the drug or the compound. So these changes in structure will also have effect on the physical chemical properties besides the activity. So this relation is usually referred or sometimes referred as structural physical chemical properties relationship. Structural physical chemical properties relationship. So change in structure can affect the solubility, the stability of the molecule and other features which will be dealt with in this section. We're also going to interpret the effect of changes in molecular structure on the selectivity of the compound toward cholinergic receptor types, the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. So this is called structural selectivity relationship. These abbreviations are yani, used internally in this uh, in this section and not yani, uh, well defined outside this uh, section. The other part of the of this section will include the interpretation of molecular structure effect on mode of action. Changes in molecular structure will have changes on the mode of action of the compounds. So we can change compound from agonist to antagonist by changing the molecular features, the structural features of the molecule. So structural mode of action relationship. The classification of neurons in the body can be neurons can be classified into central neurons and peripheral neurons. Central neurons are those neurons that form the brain and the spinal cord while the peripheral neurons are those neurons that act as a sensory neurons or motor neurons. Sensory neurons means those neurons that are taking the signal from the tissue to the central nervous system. While the motor neurons are those neurons that are taking the signal from the central nervous system to the tissue. 
usually the muscles. So those neurons which act as a motor neurons are divided into two types somatic neurons or autonomic neurons. Somatic neurons are those neurons that innervate the skeletal muscles. Means those neurons are taking the signal from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscles to control the voluntary muscle movement. The autonomic neurons are those neurons that take the signal from the central nervous system to control involuntary muscles like the smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. As you can see, those neurons also, they have they are different. Some of them are somatic and some of them are autonomic. They, are, they share some features of the type of the neurotransmitters used. So, both somatic neurons and part of autonomic neurons are using acetylcholine as neurotransmitters, therefore called cholinergic neurons. The cholinergic neurons are present in somatic neurons as well as in autonomic neurons. Those cholinergic neurons which are present, which are somatic of somatic type, are usually nicotinic. Are nicotinic receptors. Those somatic cholinergic neurons use absolutely nicotinic receptors as a receptor for acetylcholine. While those cholinergic neurons, which belong to the autonomic neurons, can have different types of receptor to acetylcholine. They use either nicotinic receptors or some of them are using muscarinic receptors. So the cholinergic neurons in autonomic nervous system can use two types of receptors, nicotinic and muscarinic. While the cholinergic neurons of somatic uh, neurons are using only single type of receptor which is the nicotinic receptor. For the adrenergic neurons in autonomic nervous system, they use different types of neurotransmitters, which is, adrena which is the adrenaline and noradrenaline, and they have different types of receptors to these adrenaline and noradrenaline. They are called the alpha receptors and beta receptors. So, as you can see, this is the general classification of neurons present in the central in the, in the nervous system of the human including the types of neurotransmitters used as well as the type of receptors which interact with these neurotransmitters the peripheral nervous system uh, is called as a peripheral in relation to the central nervous system which is the brain and the spinal cord as we said previously, the peripheral nervous system includes the sensory nerves or sensory neurons and motor neurons. The sensory neurons take the message from the body to the central nervous system, while the motor neurons carry the message from the central nervous system to the rest of the body. So they have different direction of transmitting the signals. We are going to deal with some important point, which is how these signals are transmitted and whether these signals were transmitted through a synapses or not. So some neurons take the message from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles through single neurons with no synapse. Means the signal which coming from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscle is transmitted directly with a, with a single neuron. So there is a single neuron which takes the signal directly to the muscle. While those neurons which innervate the smooth muscles and cardiac muscles usually take the signal from the central nervous system through a synapse. Means there is a synapse which through which the signal is transmitted to the muscles. This synapse usually 
making uh, some differences in the transmitting the signals it can have some effect on the signals being transmitted so the first case which is the signal transmitted from central nervous system to skeletal muscles these uh, neurons take the signals to the muscle with no synapse and use only fast receptors fast receptors means those receptors that are responding very fast to the neurotransmitter and this is needed for the skeletal muscles for the movement to to take action in fast and uh, in fast action so the person need to go to to move his muscles in a fast way and precise way so he need a fast type of receptors and uh, signals being transmitted to the skeletal muscles with no synapse and no delay so this is happened this 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 type of signaling is happened in the skeletal muscles while the signal transmitted from the central nervous system to smooth and cardiac muscles usually are going through a synapse and these synapses uh, will have some effect on delaying and propagating the signal anyhow those neurons that take the message from the central nervous system to smooth muscles and cardiac muscles usually are going through synapses as you can see here and they have they have different type of receptors some of them are fast some of them are slow receptors therefore the signal transmitted to the smooth and cardiac muscles usually it it, 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 it travels a bit slower but the effect of the signals will stay longer so the signal transmitted from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles is a fast signal but short lived the signals lived very shortly while the signal transmitted from the central nervous system to smooth and cardiac muscles and other t some other tissues supported by the autonomic nervous system the signal transmitted is slow and long lived this is the main difference between the uh, neuron, the signaling, tr the signal transmission uh, between the uh, neurons which are supplying skeletal muscles and neurons that are supplying smooth and cardiac muscles. The chemicals are used as neurotransmitters to take the signal from one neuron to that to another, and these uh, chemicals are called as we know t neurotransmitters chemical neurotransmitters in autonomic nervous system we have two type of chemical neurotransmitters the acetylcholine and noradrenaline and both of these have different structures acetylcholine and no adrenaline and noradrenaline which are belong to the catecholamine a group of compounds so the signal transmitted through the synapse actually the synapse itself has some benefits on transmitting the signals as we, as we saw previously the signal transmission into to smooth and cardiac muscles and other tissues supported by the autonomic nervous systems are going through synapses what these synapses can do for the signal these synapses actually can have uh, a refreshment effect and amplification effect on the signal so the signal when reach the terminal of the neurons the presynaptic neuron reach in a week uh, as a weak signal because it travels longer the distance so the synapse have the the ability to augment and amplify the signals and refresh the signal again because at the synapse the new generation of the chemical signal is taking place also extending the duration of the signal so as long as the neurotransmitter is in the synapse the signal is still propagating in the post synaptic neuron spreading the signal if the uh, neuron the presynaptic neuron have synapses with different neurons both of these different neurons will, will take the signal from this presynaptic neuron so it will have 
an effect of propagating the signal to other neurons. So the synapse have a yani, beneficial effect on the signal, although it usually slows the signal propagation, but it have this beneficial effect on the signals. <coughs> For the cholinergic neurons, the synapses usually are very uh, small space from 100 to 500 angstrom distance between the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neuron. So when the nerve impulse comes to the presynaptic neurons, the chemical neurotransmitters are released from the vesicles to the to the synaptic space, then can interact with the postsynaptic neuron receptors. Some of these chemical neurotransmitters will also interact with the presynaptic neuron receptor to slow down or have a backward effect to stop the further signaling of this neuron. So they have a feedback effect. Anyhow, the synapse has a beneficial effect on the signal uh, amplitude, duration, and spreading but it usually slows down the signal of propagation toward the affected tissue. Distribution of fast and slow acetylcholine receptors. As we said the previous day, acetylcholine receptors can be differentiated into fast and slow receptors. Fast receptors are those receptors that, that respond very fast to the acetylcholine and transmit the signal to the affected neuron, while those <coughs> slow acetylcholine receptors are those receptors that <coughs> interact slowly with the acetylcholine and that therefore transmitting the signal is slowly. The fast receptors are nicotinic receptors because these receptors are belong to ligand gated ion channels, which which are the the uh, anion channels that respond to a ligand which is acetylcholine, which directly can open the channel and uh, transmit the action potential to the neuron. Can di directly depolarize the neuron and making the signal transmitted. While those slow receptors like muscarinic receptors are belong to the G protein coupled type of receptors and these receptors usually would take the signal to the cell through a G protein complex which which interact with other protein kinases or other uh, other second second messengers and this uh, way of uh, transmitting the potential is slow although it is uh, long-lived but slow so these uh, differences between acetylcholine receptors nicotine and muscarinic having uh, differences on the speed of transmitting the signal as we said previously the somatic neurons usually use nicotinic receptors because we need a fast movement in skeletal muscles while the autonomic neurons usually use muscarinic neurons at the afferent affected tissue although in the synapses the interaction somehow is also fast and also using nicotinic receptors so the transmission of the signal through the synapses is uh, going through nicotinic receptors while at the affected tissue is muscarinic receptors yeah, so we want to summarize the nicotinic receptors are present at the neuromuscular junction in somatic neurons they are present in the synapses of autonomic nervous system whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic neurons while muscarinic receptors are present in smooth muscles and cardiac muscles, 